we started this planning uh, in some months ago. The burden for this is from, uh, you know, when we have people who do not know much about something, they, they tend, because knowledge is very important when we are talking about career. Many people say that they don't, uh, you know, there is no job, there is no job. And some of the things that I still say is that there are jobs actually, but jo some do not have the right knowledge to get the available ones. Or even sometimes when you look at some people's CVs and all. So this boot camp is actually born out of body of uh, Christ Apostolic Church Youth Fellowship academic summit so we went for academic summit and and the team for the academic summit is grace for exploits that's yeah. christ apostolic church youth fellowship academic summit that was held at uh, our camp we went for the summit and as we're praying uh, god has laid it in my heart before uh, before time that we, we having a gathering like this will benefit a lot of people, even uh, beyond the scope of our own fellowship. So uh, as we are praying grace for exploits, we are praying that God will grant us grace for exploits. But one thing that I've noticed is if we are praying that God should grant us grace for exploits, there are still some things that is needed. Uh, God will only add, if you have zero, uh, if, what, uh, if what you have mm, is zero and you are expecting God to maximize the zero, even if God puts 1,000 on the zero, it will still be zero. And some of us, we don't know how to, you know, when it comes to our career path, we don't even know how to choose a career path. Uh, we don't know how to write the CV. Some of us, our CV, if we look at our CV, uh, it is, is nowhere to be found. And we even job, we don't know how to search for jobs that is in line with our career. You know, some of us don't go out, know how to, for those that are going to academia, because this, when we are talking about career, we are not only talking about the uh, inputs, the white collar jobs, you know. We also... Uh, factor in the academia because we'll be having uh, career development in academia talk. We'll be having grants and grant sourcing also here. Yeah, we'll be having research writing and all. Uh, same way we'll be having uh, CV writing, job search strategies, uh, LinkedIn optimization, and many more. So most of us don't know how to do these things and if we don't have this knowledge, it will be difficult for us to navigate through the career work. Believe me, uh, if God wants to bless us, you we must have a knowledge that God uh, will bless. We must have something that we know, you know, something excellent that God can bless. And sometimes when uh, we have the opportunity, even sometimes when we have the opportunity, just because we don't have the required knowledge, uh, we we end up losing it. Uh, we end up uh, we end up losing that opportunity. I have different stories of people who uh, who, for example, okay, let me share a story. There, there is this guy that have the connections, you know, and he wants to work in um, and he wants to work in a place like Shell, you know, oil and gas company, and he has the connection there. No doubt. And even the way to get the connection is just to submit a CV and they approve it and you got a job. But at the point of submitting, at the point of submitting the CV, you know, we later end up, they later find out that he got a third class in which it is not aligning with the requirements for recruitment in the company. You know, all these things are what we must know. Why is it that we you need to... Though some of these things will be discussed at the interactive section. You know, that why is it that you need to... Uh, 
uh, your career, what are the things that you can use your career to do, how you can find a career path, you know? Even as an undergraduate, why you need an ACV, curriculum vitae, and also why you need a cover letter. All these things are what uh, born out the passion, you know, for this particular bootcamp. And we have meticulously seek for the experts in this field. Uh, anybody we are inviting here, they are experts in the field at which we have called them to. So uh, meticulously, we have tried to sort out for experts that will train us in this, starting from the first one. In fact, we, we peg it as the first, which is finding a career path. You know, some of us, we don't even know how to find a career path with your own work, you know, with your own, uh, what you study in school. Even that skills that you are doing, you know, that digital marketing skills, that tech skills, that even tailoring skills, yeah, you can, you can build up, uh, you can build up something with it. How to find, uh, how to build up your career with whatsoever you are doing. It might be, uh, it may be a tech skills, like I said, and it might also be what you study in school. I, just because you are studying uh, microbiology does not mean that you, uh, you cannot use it for something. You know, that's the belief that we have, but I can tell you that there are opportunities out there. Only if you can figure out uh, how to make use of those opportunities. And the bridge between you making use of the opportunity and you knowing it is knowledge. The bridge is knowledge. And that's the bridge that we want to build today so that you can walk through the bridge. So I would really advise you. I would really want you to, because we put a lot to this, and I really want you to please pay attention. All the speakers will be joining us as they will be talking on different aspects. Also, uh, especially, I will be taking that specially, and uh, it will be on, even though you know how to write your CV, how can you design it? At least we all know uh, the popular design software, which is Canva. With Canva, you can actually design a professional curriculum vitae Another speaker will be talking to us on how to write a CV. You know, that's different. But uh, please, let's pay attention. LinkedIn optimization and networking. There are many opportunities that are on LinkedIn that we can maximize only if we know how to. Yeah, only if we know how to. There are ways at which you should go to an interview. There are ways at which you should not go to an interview. There are ways at which you should answer questions. Only if we know. And the knowledge part is why we are here. And this boot camp is organized by Christ Apostolic Church Youth Fellowship uh, in partnership, Christ Apostolic Church Youth Fellowship Mount Bethel, Ileife, in partnership with Christ Apostolic Church or Youth Fellowship or Bafemi Awolowo University. So we are we are throwing this boot camp uh, in a way to make sure that people have the right knowledge, the right knowledge to go about their career. So I welcome every one of you once again. I welcome you. Thank you for showing up. If we organize this and nobody showed up, then there's nothing we can do. But I'm just thanking you for, thank you for showing up. God bless you. I hope you will get uh, the best out of this. And I pray that even beyond this, uh, this, will be a, this will be a beginning of what God will do in your career. This is God's establishment. No, we, don't, we do not just think of it. It is God that directed us to organize it. And if God is saying it, it means it is for somebody. And I know that uh, I know that this bootcamp, by the time we are having this bootcamp again next year, because 
it will be an annual thing. By the time you're having this again next year, people will come with testimonies and also to, to learn more and to gain more. Uh, I pray that this will be a, a remarkable one in our lives in Jesus' name. That lives will be transformed. Careers will be transformed. So thank you all for coming. God bless you. And with that, I want to uh, I want to welcome uh, my I want to welcome my August my August opening keynote speech. Uh, that is in person of Doctor Joseph Igbokwe. He's also one of our he, he, he's also one of our speakers, but his session will be on Sunday to us on grants and scholarship. So join me as I welcome uh, Dr. Joseph Ibokwe for the keynote speech for this career. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, Dr. Joseph, we have your yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Good. I believe I want to be sure that. Good evening. I'm, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that feedback, Mr. Gabriel. At least that feedback helps help me to know that I'm being at, and I'm not just talking to myself. Good evening, everyone. Once again. Good evening. 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 Um, good, evening. Uh, good evening, Dr. Joseph. In designing, coming to uh, uh, propose, plan, and then prepare for this boot camp. And the thing of joy to see that it's coming to reality today. Uh, indeed, we're really kickstarting this virtual career boot camp. And with a lot of expectations that have been brought into this, and a lot of possibilities I know can come out of this. To me, it's a great delight to see that to see that is coming to physical expression itself. I know in the WhatsApp group, I saw a lot of people joining in. We are playing ten it was one thousand participants, and I'm wondering where is everybody now. This is just forty people or plus here. I expect that they will soon join in in the process. But it's a good thing to see that what uh, what was proposed is actually coming to fruition today and i don't have so much to say thank god for the president he has elected some very key important things that we will gain from this uh, platform and that's what i'll just reiterate and also encourage us every one of us that is participating that you are not wasting your time this is not a waste of time and this also this is not just a gathering that we want to just gather people let's just do something no this is god ordained i believe god ordained this and it has all the effort that we put to it for it to become possible is because I believe God is actually interested and is particular about somebody. It may just be only you. So let just be an audience of you alone with God, with this career talk. A lot of talk, a lot of speakers we have reached out to very nice possible speakers on each of the topics and they are excited. Uh, they are very interested in being part of this and they are overly joy to pour out of their own world of experience, wealth of knowledge to pour into us, to be able to enlighten us, educate us and teach us in the way we ought to go. And I know that we all that we are joining, we keep encouraging others to, to join in, to take advantage of all the goodies that God will be sharing with us and through men. I know God speaks, but we know that God speaks through verses and men are those verses that give expression to God's thoughts and God's voice to us as men. So a lot of doubt will be cleared in these sessions. A lot of confusion will be set to the law of indecision will be helped because words will be coming forth from experience and by inspiration too. Words will be coming forth that will be lightening our bodies, enlightening our heart, enlightening our mind and transforming us. So see these three days as a transforming platform for you. Just if you can even take a retreat, just withdraw from every other thing and focus on these three days and all that will be poured and poured on you. It, I, I believe it's worth it. I mean, or do you second? Is there, do I have a second that, that is worth taking off three days? Focus on this boot camp. If somebody second, please just say I second the motion. 
How to see show that we have? I second the motion. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, Sister Ma, Sister Salvation, thank you for seconding. <laughs> so That's if you can withdraw from, yeah, if you can withdraw from every other thing to focus your mind and focus your intellect, focus everything you have on these three days and telling yourself, I, I like the way, I believe the broker have been sent to everyone because I got a, a draft today and it, it need what was highlighted the basic thing that we'll be learning and how we'll be learning under each of the topics. We'll be learning about finding a career path which involves self-assessment technique to identify your strengths, your interests and your values, which involves exploring various industry and career opportunities, which also involves strategies for aligning personal aspiration with available career paths. So which is what we'll be learning today. So like two sessions we'll be going through today, finding a career path. And I know the speaker is someone that I'm very excited to have around. She came all the way from South Africa <laughs> to come and be a blessing to us, Dr. Tulela Blessing Takene. I believe I'm pronouncing her name very well. And finally, she's already on the call anyway. She's expectant. I know, trust me, I know you are going to enjoy our session. I know that one for sure. And it's going to be a life transforming one for you. So we have been finding a career path today. And also, I believe CV writing to be done today. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, no, career development. Yeah, career development in academia also will be done today. And we have our professor with us who will be taking us that session today. Professor Bioshito, we know he's a very astute researcher and a very, very, very well recognized in his field with a lot of grants. And so he's someone that is really right to be the person to take up that uh, that topic. And he's ready, ever ready to pour. That one character you've seen is ever ready to pour into the youth so, to, to enlighten us on what we need to know to take the next step and to take the next level of our life. Okay. Yeah. So one thing that I want to stress as I round up this keynote speech is that we need to pay attention. That's all price. All the, we, 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 this thing is free, so you don't have to pay anything. The only price you have to pay now, which is also <laughs> payable by you, is to pay attention. Tell your neighbor, pay attention. I want you to just unmute and tell somebody, pay attention. Call somebody's name. <laughs> I know we can't see you. I don't know what you're doing right now, whether you are playing or you're doing, but pay attention. Please pay attention. Tell your friend, tell your brother. Don't disturb her. The thing is for free, but the only price you have to pay is pay attention. It's okay, yeah. Thank you very much for that. So let's pay attention. Let's let's listen to what will be said let's take advantage of what will be said i know you have your keypads ready your notes to take notes take note of important points that, that comes to you and take note of things also that you go back again to go and review after the after the three days program is over i know we have a lot to share and trust me the timing will not be enough to explain everything but one thing i believe we also have is the contact of all the speakers so if there are any follow-up questions follow-up interaction that you think you may deserve desire you can always reach out to them and i know all of the speakers they are very open people very accessible people and they're very people that are willing to help you know the difference between you do not doing something for the money um, i don't think we are paying them anything early the only thing we are paying them now is the opportunity to come and be a blessing to us. So they came here not because of nothing to gain in that sense. I want to, I can fully tell you that they are here all the way from Canada, from South Africa, from Nigeria, from everywhere we gather everybody that's speaking. They, they came because they love you. And one thing you can do for them, to me, which would be a great uh, honor of the time and the effort they'll be spending is that you pay what? I also want to give me a figure to pay what? Attention. 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 Yeah, attention. Yeah. attention. attention. Yeah, attention. So that's one thing you can do to say thank you to them for sacrificing their time, sacrificing their effort, sacrificing even praying. As some of us have made some prayers for consigning this program, and we are still praying that everything will work out well and that we all will receive all the best that we got that prepared for us for this. And also, another thing you can do is to invite your friends. We are up to 10 it was 1,000 on the WhatsApp group. I have to leave that group because of the people just joining every time, all the update I'm getting. Let me just withdraw from the group. 
but we are only just 39. Please reach out to people down that group, let them join in. We have made this soup, this important soup for them, is for them to come and participate in, let them join in, let them come and share, let them come and learn, let them come and relearn. Some of the things with some, maybe not be something you are hearing for the first time, but you can, you can relearn and better be better in the knowledge. So reach out to your friends, reach out to your colleagues that are not yet joining the meeting that know the soup is ready. And we are better to overlook back. It's the grace of God that made this up a totem ready. So please come and come and enjoy and come and take and benefit greatly. Because that would be our joy as speakers, as organizers, as people that set this thing up. That would be our joy that uh, you are able to participate in what is happening here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's one thing I want to stress, and I hope we all have a great time. On another, we go to the fourth session in earnest, and we having Dr. Tulila come on board. I believe the hosts and the co-hosts will be bringing them on board soon operating their citation and also bringing them on. So thank you very much for having me. I want to welcome also in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit to this career boot camp. And we flag it off. It's starting powerfully. I can see the host already, salvation grace already post to talk. So let me just hand over to you straight off so that you can carry on from where I have stopped. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, Joseph. Thank you very much. We celebrate you. God bless you, Sam. So thank you everyone for joining. You can still um, share the link everywhere. Let people join this session. So I would like to introduce my co-host in person of Christana Adeniye. She'll be joining me in this session and um, we are going to moderate this session together. So I want you to um, celebrate somebody, mention somebody's name and say, hi, you're welcome. I hope to connect with you after this, um, after tonight's session. So I want you to unmute yourself, talk to someone, mention someone's name. Come see Steven, okay. Uh, salvation. Nice to, hey, you. Nice, to <laughs> nice to meet you. 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 Nice to connect with all of you. Nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, girl. Mercy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The community is there to interact with itself. So I hope that beyond this um session, we connect with ourselves so that yeah, we get to meet ourselves and help ourselves. Thank you very much. So Christana, are you on board? Please. Welcome, Christana, with me. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, thank I you very much. Submission, Grace. Uh, Christana, you're welcome. Thank you very much. So, without further ado, we'll be starting this session, and I'd like to introduce who our first speaker will be. Yes, we must have heard them talking about it already, but our first speaker is going to be Dr. Tulila Blessing. And... I would like to read a citation. So please, I want you all to listen attentively while I read that citation. And peradventure, the citation is making you touched and encouraging you. You can do what drop emojis to encourage, you can do what drop claps and all. So listen as I read that citation. Okay. Dr. Tulela Blessing is an education specialist and currently a postdoctoral fellow at Wheat School of Education. She is a social activist, author, life coach, and mentor. She holds a PhD in primary mathematics education from Wits University, a master's degree in primary mathematics education from Wits University, a postgraduate certificate in education from UCT, and a national diploma in electrical engineering from CPUT with five years of working experience in the field. At this point, I'm expecting the comment section to be blowing with
emojis because it's marketing management course. She's a recipient of the Mammon Tech Percanting Award for both the most distinguished black women a master's 2014 and phd 2021 students in the field of mathematics education she is a winner of the third prize in the first national three minute thesis competition held at the university of free states in 2015. she is the founder of destiny stars foundation an mpo which conducts interventions focused on numeracy literacy career guidance and finding purpose she is an author of a book titled living courageously Positive Discovering Purpose After an HIV Plus Diagnosis. She is the owner of a private company, Living Courageously Positive Pty Limited. She is a secretary for the Gauteng Elind Authors Forum and an advisory member of the Leap Christian Academy Limitless Youth Group. Her other passions also involve community development, counseling, training, youth development, and training and mentoring of teachers. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to bring to the podium Dr. Telula Blessing. Honey. Celebrate Grace. I need you to clap. Engage the comment section with emojis. Clap. Put um, celebration emojis. Thank you very much. Over to you, Miss um, Dr. Blessing. Sorry, my, my mic was off. Yes, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you, ma. Good nice evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. You know, right now, I can just imagine, I feel like, you know, we are, the way you guys are making this plan so vibrant, you know, I, it's like I'm imagining myself like in this big room, you know, I can just hear all these hands. <laughs> I guess it. Oh, it's just nice so exciting, so exciting to be here. Um, and thank we you love you. You are welcome. Man. <laughs> yeah. Love you too. Absolutely thank you, welcome. Brother Joseph. Welcome. 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 You guys, you guys are amazing. You know, it's always exciting for me to have to speak to children of God. You know, especially being in my field. You know, sometimes you get invited to go and speak to young people, and you know, and sometimes you are restricted. You know, because you can't really talk about you know truth. You can't talk about uh, finding you know, um, a, a career path and finding purpose from a spiritual perspective, because you know that whatever, you know, that people are trying to do outside of God is futile. You know, people can try and be as educated and have 20 PhDs, but as long as some, somebody is outside the will of God, it's never going to work. So it's always very, very exciting um, to speak to, to children of God. So I'm going to share my screen um, and then we'll get right into it. Okay, um, so just give me a minute. I usually use Zoom a lot, okay? So just let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, I can't see anything else on my, uh, on my screen. I can't see people's faces or anything. All I can see is my screen. So can just somebody can just- We can see your screen, Matt. We can see your screen. All right, yeah, awesome. So our topic, uh, my topic that I've been tasked to speak about, which is a great, great um, passion of mine, is finding a career path, which includes self-assessment techniques, um, you know, and at the end, so please prepare yourself that, you know, as we, um, we are engaging at the end, I'm actually going to give you a practical exercise, which you are actually um, going to do. And it's really going to be the starting point because it's going to be a, a process. Okay. It's going to be the start of your journey if you've never done it before. Okay. So um, quite interestingly, beginning of this year, I was invited um, to go and speak to um, young people at a, as you guys, I don't know if you guys are aware, but on the 16th of June, we celebrate what we call June 16. Okay. And so the history of June 16 in South Africa is that um, when, um, you know, white people came and colonized South Africa, they, um, they started, you know, in addition to obviously, um, you know, uh, destabilizing people and chasing people out of their, their houses and their environments um, and really just separating them, you know, and putting them away from, from white people. One of the things that we did was that they were offering us an education so that we can be trained as slaves, okay? And, and the key thing was that we, we needed to be trained in, in a language. So there's a language in South Africa called Afrikaans, 
okay? It's a language that is very much linked to, to the Dutch. And, and so the, the, during um, that time, um, the white people uh, forced, um, they basically passed on a bill which forced black people to learn in their schools, in their township. So, you know, the, the locations, the places where pe black people stayed in those days, even today is called townships. So schools were forced to learn Afrikaans, okay? And so on the June 16, um, 1976, young people arose and they said, not on our watch. We are not going to do this. And so they all went to um, um, the, the, the um, union buildings in the capital of South Africa and Pretoria, um, you know, and there was a lot of shooting there, you know, many young people, you know, um, died. And so the 16th of June in South Africa is the commemoration of that day because, because of that day, that law was actually scrapped. It actually didn't materialize, okay? So I was invited, you know, by young people in a certain church to go and talk about juggling a career and social life, okay? So this was a topic that I was given to talk about. And when I looked at this topic, I was quite shocked. I said, okay. Um, these are children of God. And so as children of God, we want to juggle. You know, if you hear, if you think about the word juggle, you see on my screen, actually, that, um, you know, as an educator, I like to bring in, you know, I like to go out and I go to the dictionary and, and I like to show people the, the definitions of some of the, the terms and the words that we use, because, you know, we take them for granted, you know, because in most cases, we tend to follow the world so much, you know, that, you know, you know, I'm just juggling, you know, I'm juggling life, you know, I'm hassling, you know, because according to me, as children of God, we're not supposed to be juggling. You know, when you juggle, it's like tossing things into the air, you know, and trying to keep this one and trying to keep this one, and then it's not working, you know? And so basically, children of God, we want to be living this life where we are juggling a career, you know, and then we are juggling, we want to have a social life, which is, you know, a time spent doing enjoyable things with others. You know, so this didn't sit well with me. And and I just said to the Holy Spirit, OK, you have to help me to change, you know, this and um, this topic, you know, a little bit so that I can speak from a perspective that will empower these young people. And so the Holy Spirit says, well, at least maybe you can change from juggling to navigating. Right. Because the difference between juggling and navigating is that generally in terms of navigating, uh, of trying to find a career path is that you have got to navigate, okay? So navigation in life is, is normal, right? And it's basically to plan and direct. So it involves planning. It's not this thing of just waking up in the morning and just saying, oh, well, you know, we'll see when we get there. <laughs> you know, in my, in my language, you know, people will say things like, someone are corner, you know, we'll see when we get there, right? So navigating is about, you know, you, you have to have a plan for your career, okay? So that's basically my, 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 my point of, of departure, right? That when we talk about a career, you know, we, it, it's almost like we talk about it very, we're very carelessly, okay? And so we actually need to, to structure it, to talk about it in a way that is structured so that we can, um, you know, so that it's going to be, uh, we're going to be led, you know, in, in a structural way and in a way that, that God wants us to be able to live out our careers. Okay, so, Moving on now to the next slide. Um, so what is a career from a worldly perspective, right? So again, because we live in a world that is dominated by people who are not, or who do not necessarily have the same beliefs as we do, okay? We attend public schools, even some Christian schools that are supposedly Christian schools, but um, you know, we are not necessarily grounded in the way that God wants us to be grounded, okay? And so we are socialized, you know, into in, in these public schools so that we can think about, uh, you know, a career and think about life from a worldly perspective. OK, so how the world thinks about what a career is, number one, when you have a career, it's about staying in the same type of work. That is why you find that in uh, many cases, many people will always look for permanent jobs. <laughs> And I'm saying permanent, you see, I'm using my hands, you know, to say, you know, uh, quote, permanent, because there's nothing that's permanent in life, okay? Because people have got this idea that as long as I can have a permanent job, you know, I can just stay in this job, you know, I can stay being a doctor forever, I'm happy, 
right? And that's how the world thinks. Number two, a career can be one job or many jobs, right? So again, this juggling, you know, some people, they have, no, you need different streams, you know, of, of, of income, okay? Number three, you can work for one company or many companies, okay? Number four, a career is sometimes called a career path. Number five, a career includes education, training, and work experience. And we're going to go deeper into, you know, all of these things that I'm, I'm mentioning here. I'm just laying a foundation, okay? And then lastly, a career usually entails what we call career objectives, which takes us to the next slide, okay? So what are career objectives then? In other words, um, what are you envisioning about your growth in that specific field, okay? So, um, a career objective is an optional component of a resume or a CV that briefly describes the skills, experience, and abilities the candidate has to offer. Typically, an applicant adds the career objective at the top of the resume or CV, just below their name and contact information. Okay, now I'm, I'm sorry, ma. The slide yes. is not changing, ma. Oh, hmm. you're still on the first one. Yes, ma. Uh, okay. Okay, now it's no? changing now. Thank you. Now. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna keep it as it is on mine. So are you just seeing one slide, or um, what else are you seeing? Yeah, this is the first, second slide, ma. Okay. Let me go to the third slide. Career and social life. Yeah. What is career? And now you see what is the career? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> career from a worldly career perspective. From a worldly perspective. Okay, yes. all right. So we are on this slide now. <laughs> How you are telling me on the fourth slide. Oh. <laughs> okay. Are we still together? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Awesome. So now when we talk about, so we're talking about now a career objective. Remember, I'm just laying a foundation of how the world sees what a career is, okay? And I'm, you'll see why I'm actually starting from here because I'm now going to sort of shift, okay? And move to a different perspective. Looking at a career from a perspective of a believer or a child of God, okay? So the first thing that I read now, which basically is about, you know, a, a CV, um, you know, or your, or your resume that describes, you know, your skills. And obviously, um, in some of the sessions, we are going to be learning, you know, about how to write a good CV, you know, et cetera. Okay. Now, what I always advise people, so I've had a privilege of, you know, sitting in recruitment, um, you know, groups um, and, and choosing, you know, candidates. And one of the things that I notice about many people, and this include both young and old, by the way. One of the things that I observe people do is that um, people don't realize that when you put down your CV or your resume, right, it is you are sending yourself, okay? You are sending yourself before people can even see you. That is why when you send a CV, sorry, I'm not, I'm not talking, I'm not, I know there's going to be a, a session on the CV now, okay? But I'm just trying to make a point here that when you're sending your CV, you are sending yourself, okay? And therefore, it needs to be as detailed as possible. You want these people to picture you before they even call you for an, for an interview, okay? Now, what you will notice is that, especially now in this day and age, many people at the top, uh, you know, of, of their CV, they will basically talk about what their career objective is, okay? Now, let me give examples of career objectives, okay, from, again, from a worldly perspective. Number one, so... Um, People will ask, maybe you go for an interview and they'll ask you, okay, so, you know, what are your aspirations, right? And so you'll get, okay, I want to get an opportunity where I can make the best of my potential and contribute to the organization's growth, okay? Because remember, we always want to sell ourselves, okay? And, and, and when we go to these workshops, you know, sometimes you are being told that, remember, you know, you must, you must read about that organization. You must know everything about that organization so that because when they know that you know about what they do, you know, they're actually going to see that you, you really have researched, you know, and you know about them and you really, you're serious about your job, okay? Now, the problem with wanting to contribute to the organization's growth is that that, that organization does not want the same thing for you. Organizations do not care about your own growth. 
they are just wanting to use you to for their own growth okay so if your your own um your career objective is to work for a very big company i think the president made a nice example about the guy who went to go shell right and when they were looking at at his results they could see that he had a class three right and that really shows you because if that company really cared for that guy they would say okay we can see you've got a class three but we also can see that you really you know you are interested come we will train you so they don't care about that they want you to come and join their company so that at the end of the day they can grow okay number two they will ask you so okay so what is your aspiration and your career objective could be well i'm seeking for a position in a company where can i where i can launch my career and build a valuable skill set okay i'm seeking a role where i can upgrade my skills with time and take the company to the next level okay so i'm not going to to dwell more but I'm going to revisit it. So when we do the practical exercise, I'm going to come back now and talk about the skill sets. Okay, what are the skills? What do those look like? And how do we discover those, etc. Okay, point number four, someone will say, I'm seeking an entry level position to begin my career in a high level professional environment. Lastly, someone's career objective might be I want to obtain a challenging and rewarding position in a dynamic organization where I can utilize my skills and experience to contribute to the growth and the success of the company. Now, you, what you, I'm sure some of you here are already professionals. You've worked for many companies, okay? And that the key thing about companies is that they are looking for people that will grow and make their company successful, and they will not really care about you, okay? now let me move and and tell you um a bit of my testimony okay and um i'm now moving and shifting to a perspective of how do we navigate a career from a believer's perspective okay so growing up i didn't have a dream at all all of the things that have been read from my my profile i have not desired to do any of them people don't believe me when i tell them i was raised in a home of educators unfortunately i can't see um any any comments or anything so but i'll attend to them at the end i was raised in a home of educators um who were very involved in social development i was raised in, uh, during the era of apartheid um, so my, my family members, my mother was a teacher, my uncle was a teacher and became a principal and became an, an inspector in the Department of Education. My grandmother was a teacher. Most of my family members are educators. However, we never had conversations about careers, okay? In addition to that, I was raised in a very religious environment. When I talk about religious, I mean very religious. We were not, nobody was born again in my family, okay? And so um, to cut the long, long story short, I, I, I could not speak English until I was 15 years of age. So at the age of 15, I was moved from, from my hometown to boarding school. It was a Christian a boarding school. And that's where for me then I started really being exposed, you know, to, to Christianity and working with God. Although it was a Christian school though, you know, it was, um, it was very religious. Okay. So anyway, I, I finished my metric during that time. I still did not know what I wanted to do. Okay. And my uncle was a role model for me. Um, and because they, they came from an era where they were forced to either be a, a teacher or a police a man or a nurse during apartheid. And now when the schools were starting to, to open up and when different careers were starting to open up, my uncle decided that they wanted to have an engineer in the home. So he influenced me to go into the engineering field, which, which I, I took up because I didn't have any aspirations for myself. You know, I didn't have a dream. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. So um, I went into electrical engineering and fortunately for me, I managed to pass and finish and started working. In my second year of work, I met with the Lord Jesus and I got born again. Okay, I was 23 years old then. And um, two years later, that was 2002. 2004, I started traveling the world. 
And in 2004, I went to Kenya. So I came to Nigeria twice. I went to Kenya. And by that time, I already knew that I had a calling of a missionary upon my life. Um, so when I was in Kenya, I had an encounter with God and God started showing me a vision of children crying. And I started hearing voices of these children uh, calling out and saying, you know, help me, help me. And when I came back to South Africa, you know, I, I, it bothered me and I had this burden. And five years later, I resigned from my job and I started asking God, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? Um, and I started writing down, you know, a vision that God spoke to me about starting a school. God spoke to me about starting a, 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 an organization, which is Destiny Stars Foundation that you've already heard about. Um, and God started speaking to me, you know, about, you know, reaching out to, you know, education. So I left my job and for four years. I was in the wilderness. And finally, God said to me, education is where I want you to be. Um, and so I got qualifications, all the qualifications that I have, the qualifications that I have in education, they were from a place, I was 32 years when I found my, my real purpose. Okay, I'm 44 years old now. I know I don't look it, but <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I found that every time when I've shared my, my testimony, you know, it always carries a weight. I share my testimony because there might be someone out there, you are sitting with this burden, you are feeling like, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm in this engineering job, you know, I'm in this teaching job, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a lecturer, I'm a professor, you know, but right now I don't even know, you know, I don't even know whether this is my purpose. This is what God has called me to do. Right. Um, and I can tell you, it's been almost 17 years now that when I left, when I left my job, to be honest with you, I never saw a PhD. I had this vision that I was going to go into a school. I was going to change the lives of children. Going to change the lives of teachers i was going to change communities and that is still my vision that is why i do the work that i do okay and um while i was busy getting a qualification for being a teacher i i met a lecturer who said to me you know what you should um you know you've got a a, a great potential and he said she said to me um, you're going to skip honors okay and you're going to do into masters so i never did honors um i did not have a university undergraduate degree when I went to UCD to UCT to go and do my postgraduate certificate in education because it's postgrad. For you to do postgrad, you know that you need an undergrad. I did not have that. I did not qualify to do the postgrad, but God opened the door for me. Did the postgrad? I skipped honors, did masters, and did um, PhD, and I completed my PhD in 2021. Okay, and. Where I am right now, I am so at peace. God has restored everything that I lost when I left my job because I had it was a sacrifice. I had to give up everything that I had, okay? And I lost everyone in my life, my family, my church leaders, everywhere, everyone, because I thought I was crazy when I left my job. So it's important for me to share this testimony with you because I know that there's someone out there who needs to hear it. There's someone, you're at the crossroads, okay? And you really need to hear this testimony and it's going to help you. Okay, now let me move um, forward. So having spoken about finding purpose, right? One of the things that we unfortunately are not being um, taught about in, in, our, in the church in general, okay, because after being born again, one of the things that I learned in my own personal journey is that had I known that I was called into education, okay, I never would have wasted all this time in engineering, okay, I never would have. Um, so not, not every one of us have to go through this navigation, you know, of life, because why? Our purpose on earth begins on the day you were born, okay? So we don't have to be, you know, be born and then, you know, we, we just go on with life and then when you are 20 years old or when you are 25 or 32 like me, and now you are like, oh, now I find my purpose. God did not mean it that way, right? So for some of you now, you are so fortunate in that you were raised in, in Christian homes. Some of you are now parents. Um, some of you, maybe you are still single and you want to get married. So it is so important to make sure that as you are praying for a wife and for children, already you need to start asking God, what is the purpose of my children? Our parents never did that for us, okay? When I was growing up as a child, I used to teach, you know, I used to teach other children. 
And if my mother had the insight into the kingdom of God, she would have seen that, oh my goodness, this child actually needs to go into education, but she didn't have that insight. All right. So anyway, it's never too late. Okay. Now, let me move into the next slide, right? I know that this, I'm starting with all the heavy stuff. Don't worry, it's going to get a bit lighter as we as we continue, okay? Um, the, the thing about purpose, which again, I think for me, it became such a, a revelation, um, which really made me to really stay with God, although the path was difficult. The path of, of discovering purpose for me was really difficult and having to leave my job, it was hard. OK, because I was persecuted. People thought I was crazy. I moved from a place of having everything, of being successful to a point where I lost um, everything, which was part of God testing for my life that I had to go through that path. Right. So one of the things that scared me was the three scriptures I'm going to share with you guys. OK, the first one is in Revelation chapter 20. OK, it starts, you know, by saying um, this, this is the throne room, um, you know, the judgment throne of God, you know, that one day we're all going to stand before God. Right. And it says, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it, the earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I've highlighted this red part because this is the most, most important part. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. We know that that is when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your, 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 your name is written in the book of life. Number two, the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Can you see? So it's like, it's like going to university, right? You cannot be assessed at university or at school unless you have gone through the process of learning. Okay. And so life for us is that university, it's that process because why? We have already been given the textbook. The word of God is our textbook, right? Our relationship with God is our textbook that we need to know what is it that we ought to be doing with our lives? What is our purpose? Because we are going to have to stand before God one day and, and account for it. Can you imagine standing before God one day and God is going to say, uh, uh, Apostle Joseph, come forward. And then Joseph is looking around. He's like, Apostle Joseph, Ibokwe, come forward. And Joseph's like, huh? Apostle no, but Lord, uh, sorry, Joseph, I'm just I'm making an example. <laughs> but Lord, uh, me, I was a researcher and God said- No but... problem. <laughs> and Joseph's like, but Lord, uh, me. And God is like, what were you doing then? You see, if you were an apostle, look at all of these people that would have given their lives to the Lord. Not to say that as a researcher, people would not give their lives to the Lord, right? So this is what is going to happen, guys. And it's, it's real. So it opened my eyes. And I said to myself, I need to go back and tell my brothers and my sisters and say, guys, we are going to account for our purpose, right? Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. This is Jesus. He says, behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work, the work that he has sent me and you to do, not the work that our parents want us to do, not the work that society wants us to do, not the work that the professor wants you to do, because the professor will say, I want you to come and be my student, and I want you, I want us to research on, on gender issues, on, on, on feminism. And now you are writing all this research about feminism and how important to raise up women, women need to be in leadership positions, you know, and God is looking at you, God is like, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. I mean, look, uh, there's nothing wrong with feminism and all that. I'm just making an example, right? Lastly, Psalm 139. Your eyes, verse 16, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Okay. So our career path starts with seeking God. Lord, what is my purpose? What is the purpose that you have for my life? Yes, I desire to work for the biggest bank, for World Bank. Yes, I desire to go and go and work in, in what is this, in Wall Street in America. Yes, I desire to be, to work for, for the biggest uh, uh, accountant firm. But what is your, I'm laying down, this is my desire. What is your purpose for my life? Okay, so for me, again, this is what really became a reality and it scared me. And it really pushed me to this idea of seeking purpose as opposed to seeking for a career. Okay, so seeking a career comes after, because now once you've discovered your purpose, right, God will now start, will start to show you ways, for example, 
When I discover that my purpose is in education, God opened my eyes and said, you need the teaching qualification right? Then God started opening doors now so that I can do a master's, do a PhD, and so that I can now fully reach out to the people in this field. Okay. Now let me move quickly to what we call the spheres of influence. Okay. Because one of the things that we need to realize is that as the light of the world, we are all called to influence. Okay. All of these seven spheres that you see here, we are all called to influence them, okay? So there was, there's a guy called uh, Bill Wright and Lauren Cunningham. They apparently came up and they were both based in, 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 in campus ministry, right? Um, they came up with these seven spheres and this is what they used to empower young people who were in, in universities, in campuses, you know, and they were, they were trying, they were empowering them and saying to them, whatever that you are doing, you need to find yourself in at least each of these seven influences. You know, some of you are called to be pastors, or apostles, you know, in the fivefold ministry, you know, obviously the world calls that religion, but we know that for us, it's the kingdom of God, right? Some of you are called into family, um, you know, you are called to, you know, uh, to uh, influence, uh, you know, uh, families, and, and, and run, you know, um, um, seminars, you know, how to run families and, and get involved in, um, what do you call it, do research, um, you know, on things that influence, you know, families, etc. Some of you are called into education, government, business, media, arts and entertainment. So each and every one of you, you need to find yourselves in each of these seven. Okay, so this is your starting point. Where do I fit in, in these seven? Okay, then I'm going to bring in now the part, the point of occupation which is very much aligned with a career. When we talk about a career, it is a place that we occupy, right? Once you have now discovered your sphere of influence that you want to be part of, then out of all of this, you say, okay, so if I'm called into um, um, uh, medicine, uh, for example, you know, or business, so because medicine is business, all right? Maybe I'm called to be a, a dentist. Maybe I'm called to be a paramedic. Okay, I'm called to be a nurse, right? Or maybe I'm called to be an electrician. So that becomes your place of occupation, okay? A job is not primarily so that we can earn a salary. It is a place of occupation. And then as we are occupying that world, we influence the people around us and the people start to see value. And then they pay us. Initially, they will give you a salary based on the benchmark, right? But as they see the value, that is why there's something called promotion. You know, sometimes as believers, we make a mistake. We want to fast for 21 days. We want to pray and say, Lord, promotion comes from the Lord. Yes, promotion comes from the Lord. But you know what? Promotion comes when you have done the work and people can see the value of the work that you're doing. So you're not just going to get promotion just because you are praying and fasting for 100 days. Okay, so it, when it, this needs to be very clear for us as the children of God. All right, that you need to find a place to occupy as a king and a priest, okay, so that you can reach people in that occupation. When the, the Bible says, go and make disciples of all nations in those fears. So as much as pastors and apostles and, you know, and teachers and, you know, the fivefold ministry, as much as they are reaching people, our jobs in our occupations, my job as an education specialist is to reach people in my field because, Someone who's in medicine is not going to reach those people. My pastor is not going to reach those people. I'm the one who's going to reach those people. How am I going to reach them? Through my work, through the excellence in my work, through being available, you know, etc. Okay, so that is, again, now I've given you um, uh, um, something to think about when it comes to your sphere of, of influence. Where do you see yourself out of those seven? Your occupation, I'm going to share these slides, by the way, uh, brother, brother Joseph, and then you'll find a way of, of, of uh, just sharing them with everyone. Okay. Um, all right. Now let me quickly move. How am I doing with time? How am I doing with time? I, I want to be disciplined with time. I don't want to take too much time. Sorry, I can't see anything if you, um, you're writing on the chat. So just tell me, please. Uh, hello, sorry, Ma. I want to ask a question. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, what about those so, in the... There will be times for instance, uh, Mr. Nathaniel, Mr. Nathaniel. Sorry, there's noise behind you. There's noise behind you. There will be times for instance. Sorry, please. Uh, please, you, you can be you... You should stop in the next, uh, finish in the next 20 minutes now. Okay, great. Let me continue. And then please just uh, note down your questions and then let's have your questions afterwards. I'm almost done. Okay. So one of the things then that I usually do, um, because over the years I've been doing career guidance programs now for uh, about 16, actually more than that, probably for over 20 years. And, and I noticed that, you know, they were not always effective. OK, so then I would take notes and I started learning and God just gave me this blueprint. Right. So I started with a, a from a heavy um, you know, perspective and then I started you know, giving you now um, um, ideas about the spheres of influence. Now I'm going to move into a, a, a point of inspiration. Right. Um, and for me, one of the things that inspires me is by researching on people that have done great things in the world. OK. Now, the people that I'm actually going to, to, to discuss here, um, most of them are not born again, okay? And I do that deliberately to be able to show you as children of God that if these people can attain what they have attained without qualifications, without having a relationship with Jesus, you know, how much more than you as a child of God? You know, you, you are allowed to dream within the the, the 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 god god's purpose for your life okay so now i'm going to show you examples of individuals some of them they they've died they've passed on but some of them are, are alive right some of them you might be familiar with them or not so um trevor noah this guy is a is a, is a south african some of you guys might be uh, aware of him he is a uh, is a comedian um trevor noah does not have a qualification any form of qualification he just finished metric you know what made Trevor to flow in his career is that he was able to discover his purpose. And I mean, can you imagine someone, he was raised, his grandmother was somebody who had a very uh, strong relationship with God. And I do believe that maybe that has played a part. So, you know, he talks about, you know, his belief in Jesus and God, but you know, from a comedian point of view, because obviously he wants to be, he always wants to be politically correct. So you'll pick up that, you know, here and there, of course, but you can tell that, you know, he's not someone who owns that, you know, Jesus as a Lord and Savior, right? So Trevor Noah is 39 years old now. He's young. Okay, so you'll see that I've deliberately chose other young people that have done great things. And the things that he has attained at his age already with no qualification, but simply because he found his purpose. And there's nothing wrong with education. We need especially believers to be educated. Okay. Then there is a guy, South African um, actor, who passed on. Um, he, he was one of the best actors in South Africa. And his story touched me because he never studied to be an actor, but he was one of the best who was even training people in the industry, right? So apparently his dream was to become a lawyer. But his, and you can see in his acting, you know, even as you know him as a person, you can see he was always in acting his roles where he was always showing this very strong character. So apparently his mother could not afford for his tuition. Instead, he used to watch, his mother used to watch him doing things, you know, in the house, you know, like acting. And his mother once, one day said to him, you know what, my son, I think you should go into acting. And you know what? She was 100%. This guy, I mean, he was, he was so, he was one of those people that I, I could sit and really and watch, you know, because he was so excellent in his, in his acting, you know. He inspired and mentored many people, okay? Then I'm going to move um, to, uh, you guys all know, um, Ch Chamamanda, is, he's Nigerian, um, you know. I don't know if all of you guys have heard um, her story um, that she was, I think Prof uh, might, might know the, the parents, but she was raised by, you know, academics and they were trying to push her into medicine and she went into medicine. She dropped out in her first year and she said, no, I want to go into literature, okay. And then she went to America, you know, by faith. And she went to America and uh, to cut the long story short, we all know now, you know, about, uh, you know, the books that Chiamamanda has written. You know, I mean, she has been honored with, you know, honorary doctorates and, you know, she's just amazing. Okay. So why am I sharing this? I'm going to move, I'm going to skip, um, you know, others. Nelson Mandela, you guys all know Nelson Mandela. Um, she won Miss South Africa in 2019. And the key thing about Zosibini is that she entered Miss South Africa 
for with her hair because she wanted to bring back people's identity okay she was she's probably the first person to enter beauty pageant without any form of you know a wig or or, or you know <laughs> um yeah you know any fake you know thing right and she wanted miss south africa and let me tell you after her there were so many people now that could relate with themselves that would say you know she helped me to find my identity right so again you know there are some of you especially ladies even guys who are so beautiful because maybe your purpose in life is to become miss or mr nigeria okay so that you can change people's lives <laughs> okay so again just making an example okay then the last person i want to share it's this guy um venice and and serena williams you guys know you know they've been like world-class tennis uh, players let me tell you by the time in fact before they were born yeah, please go and, and google their, their story there's even a movie on them now that is acted by will smith I've, I've really followed all these people you know very closely um you know because i i really like to research on what is it that makes people successes okay and these guys they are um jehovah's witnesses before the children were born he wrote down 78 78 um plans that would help him and his daughters to become to become world-class uh, tennis players so everything that he was doing when they were born he coached them himself he learned how to play tennis himself so that he could coach his girls when people were coming and saying we want to coach you I was saying no no i'm going to coach my girls i know what they need and look at how they've impacted the world look at how they've opened doors for other black girls to be able to go and play in Wimbledon, to be able to go and play, you know, other things. So again, I'm sharing this in stories to inspire you and saying everything that God has called us for is to open doors for others. So let's move away from this mentality that we've been bombarded with, you know, from the West, that we need to be running for money. We need to be looking for greener pastures, you know, because all of us Africans, we do that. South Africans want to move to Europe, to Canada, we want to run away from, from our countries, you know, because we are looking for greener pastures and our countries are falling apart, okay? So all of these people, they did things, you know, to make a difference. So I'm gonna skip the rest. Like I said, I'm going to share, you guys all know Tyler Perry, I'm not going to, um, Oprah Winfrey, right? So I've done all my research on all of these people. Now, let me get to the practical exercise, which is the last thing. Okay, um, and you can really do this very, very, um, uh, very quickly. Okay, so each and every one of us, you have an innate dream that God has given you. Okay, you have an innate dream because remember the Bible says that the Lord directs the steps of the righteous. Okay, so there is a dream, there is a vision. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three. I always encourage people start with three. Okay. Write down the things that are in your heart that God has already placed in your heart. Once you have done that, okay, I'm going to move to the next slide um, quickly. Once you have done that, then you, you write a man map. So let's say, for example, your first vision is being a teacher. Okay, so I'm going to use always use myself when I do um, these sessions. Okay, you need to think about your personal strengths. What are your personal strengths? Your personal strengths, basically, they have to do with your character traits, I mean, traits, your tasks and actions that you can do well. And let me tell you, you don't need to go to no psychologist to, you know, for this thing, just sit and do it. You know yourself well. Speak to your friends, you know, ask your friends, friend, what kind of person, you know, am I? Do I have integrity? Am I loving? Am I compassionate? Because all of those things, they actually form part of your talents, they form part of your purpose, okay? Then you also need to look at your talents. Each and every one of us, we are born with innate talents. Once we discover those talents, then we acquire knowledge, which will now enhance those talents, okay? For example, me, I was born to be a teacher. Right from a young age, I was showing signs that this one is called to be a teacher now, Getting a teaching qualification, doing a master's in education, it's now acquiring knowledge. Okay, so when I'm in the classroom, how do I teach children, right? Because teaching children in foundation phase is different to teaching children in high school, for example. So I need that knowledge, right? Then there again is a skill, you know, a skill of, you know, how do I deal with young people? How do I communicate, right? Good communication is a teacher. It's a skill you learn. What kind of words do you use? All of those things. 
Okay, so you discover your personal strengths because let me tell you, your personal strengths are your starting point even for your career, okay? As opposed to personal weaknesses. Now, personal weaknesses are not necessarily bad. It's basically talents you don't have. It's knowledge and skills that you don't have. It's things that you cannot do well, which sometimes can be acquired. So weaknesses can become strengths. However, what companies mostly do is that they will say to you, okay, you've got a degree in marketing, right? And uh, we know that maybe you lack in a skill of communication. They'll take you into the company. Maybe, you know, it's not just communication. It's also, you know, people, um, people skills, you know, you are, you get very impatient with people. So they'll say, okay, we'll offer you the job and then we will upskill you. So we will take you to courses where, you know, you can improve your communication skills. Now what tends to happen is that then they'll say, we're going to put you on three months probation. Then what tends to happen is that you, you try, you get frustrated because, you know, you are spending so much time on these courses to improve your communication skills and it's just not coming. All right. After probation, they say, oh, sorry, um, you, you didn't, we can't take you full time because you just, you are just not good enough. So now you stay with that stigma that I'm not good enough as opposed to, and obviously because companies are operating from a, a selfish perspective, they are looking for people who are going to come and grow their businesses. They don't care about you, but from a kingdom perspective as believers, we need to employ people that actually have the, the, the strength, right? Of, of whatever career. And then they, you know, we, um, we, we help them to build on those strengths, on those talents. So if a person has the talent, getting the knowledge and the skills is going to be very easy for them. So for example, I always tell young people who are applying to university, once they've discovered their talents, um, I will say to them, you know what, if your, your talent is acting, right, and you're going to study a degree, Let's say you decide that, no, you want to go and do education. Yes, you want, you are good in acting, but your parents don't want to do acting because they don't think it's going to bring in money. Then you go and you study um, education and then you fail. Okay. Because you have to work so hard. You have to try. And, and, and I know this from experience because I'm, I'm in the education field. I work with a lot of students that go through the experiences. And then I speak to the parents and I say to them, you know what? Let this child go into acting, into what they want to do. OK, because for them to acquire knowledge and skills, you'll see that because it's aligned to their talent, it's going to be very easy for them to get 90 percent or 100 percent. And I've seen it. I'm telling you with myself. OK, myself, when I was at school, I was not a, a, a good student. I was not a, a, a distinction student. I was not an A student. But when I came to education, I never got anything less than 80 percent because that just came, you know, innately. Right. So. Um, Personal strengths, discover your personal strengths, discover your personal weaknesses, but don't, don't stay too much on your weaknesses, right? So rather, once you've discovered your personal strengths, rather try and see how you can enhance them. Okay. Number three, think about the resources that you have and the resources that you need. Now, a resource can be, let's say, if you need to get a, a qualification, right? Obviously, you're going to need money. If let's say you want to start a business, okay, you want to start a beauty business, right? If you want to do nails, um, sorry guys, <laughs> if you want to do hair, you know, obviously you need to get uh, your nail polish and all of these things that you need, right? So how are you going to get those things? Can you go to the bank and get money? Can you borrow money from your uncle? You know, can you start selling certain things so that you can make money? You know, all of those things, right? Um, people, stuff, you know, um, do you need to employ people in the business that you want to start? um do you need assets you know all of those things so you need to start to think about what kind of resources you have and what kind of resources you need number four this is very important the people that are key in the fulfillment of your vision all right so think about family members that you can trust that you think they can help you with all these resources that you need with even identifying your strengths what am i good at you know what do you think am I, um, um, uh, what kind of a person would you describe me as? Okay. You have to find a mentor 
You have to find an accountability partner. Now, the difference between a mentor and an accountability partner is that a mentor is not your friend. A mentor is going to be very harsh with you. So when people ask me to be their mentor, I say to them, are you, are you ready? Are you willing to receive blows? Because I'm going to be on your case and it's not going to be nice most of the time. Okay? But it's going to benefit you, right? Your accountability partner is the partner that will first, you know, brush you and say, oh, it's going to be okay, friend. You know, you can talk to that person. They keep you accountable. You know, sometimes they let you get away with certain things, right? So you need that balance. Number three, your parents, you know, some of you that have parents who are, who have resources that, you know, that they can help you with. But I need to warn you, you need to do your research well and do a nice presentation to, con to convince either your parents, your siblings, your neighbors, anybody that you think can help you. If you do your research and you do your presentation and they can see that you've thought through what you want to do, I promise you they will help you. You know, I help a lot of young, a lot of people that come to me with a plan that I can say, you know what, you've done your research, you've thought about it, even if you are, you failed having tried, but at least I know that you've really tried. Okay. So, um, yeah, so this is the, uh, that's, that's basically the practical exercise. Okay. I hope you've got, you know, all of those four, four key things when it comes to um, vision. Okay. Then as I, I end, so basically, after you've written all your three visions, right, you need to decide on which vision is likely to be implemented first, okay? The implementation of the first vision might open doors for other visions, all right? Because what you'll find that is that out of those three visions, they might be connected, they might not. But one of them might be something that you are able to do immediately that can eventually help you. So for example, if you wanted to always wanted to be a lawyer, but you know that you're good with your hands, you're good with business, you can start with business, raise funds, then you can go and pay for your for your tuition to become a lawyer, right? Put timelines for yourself very importantly. Okay, put timelines for yourself and then get your accountable partner to know about your timelines, get your mentor to know about your timelines. And as I end, I want to talk about the importance of education, right? That education is not a means of acquiring a certificate, okay? It is not for personal development. I'm sorry, it is for personal development and growth. Hmm. It's not just about getting good marks. It helps you to acquire certain skills such as meeting deadlines, being precise in your communication, paying attention to instructions, cooperating with others, submitting to authorities such as your teachers, your lecturers, developing your emotional stamina, dealing with criticism, because these are the things that you're going to need in your workplace, in society, at home, right? And there are different forms of education, okay? There are some people that are not cut out for university. There are people who are world athletes today who have never been to university just because they just have the talents, they discover it, and they go and they do what God has called them to do, right? So not everyone is cut out for formal education, but as long as a person discovers their purpose, God will direct them to what they need to do, okay? So as much as people don't need formal education, informal education is as key. You have to develop yourself. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be selling different things, it's business. You've got to understand how to conduct business. You've got to understand how to do marketing. You've got to understand how to deal with people. You've got to understand how to do budgeting, business plan, all of those things. Okay. And then that is the end. I, I hope you've benefited. And now you can ask your questions. Thank you very much. So I'm going to stop sharing now so that I can see the chats and see your faces. Okay, guys, 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 guys. Honestly, I think she deserves more than this applause that we're giving to her. Wow, honestly, thank you very much, Dr. Blessing. It was an amazing session, honestly. I don't know if you guys can see it, but my daughter is really full right now, really full. So in case you are here and you don't have a pen or a jota, you are really wrong. And I think you should get one immediately. And yes, the session was really enlightening. You know, I like the fact that we're able to blend it in with this world, you know, as Christians, you know, to find our career and the way you were able to break everything down to, to cater for everyone's needs. Mom, I must say you did a very good job. Thank you very much. Okay, now.
the question and answer session. While you were talking, someone raised a question. I would like to go and read it now. So in case you have more questions, please send them to the chat box. I'll read them once it's time. Now, to the first question, Nathaniel asked, how about those called into ministry as an apostle or pastor? How do we go about it? You know, man's got to feed and spiritual growth doesn't start in one day. Ma, I hope you got the question. Yes. Okay, please, over to you, Ma. Okay, so now again, so it's very important to understand the dynamics um, between the, the kingdom. So the kingdom of God involves the world as well, right? However, the church exists to equip the believers for the world, right? And therefore, the same way that we need training for the world is exactly, is, is exactly the same thing that is, um, that is important for the, the kingdom of God. So if, if anybody believes that they are called into the fivefold ministry, right, either to be an apostle or pastor, number one, as we all know that, you know, once you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to be discipled and walk the path. You need to belong to a spiritual family, a specific church where you are nurtured. And, and that is why it's important really to, to pray to God for, for a true church, we know that, unfortunately, these days, there are many untrue churches, right? Because if you get to a church where you have spiritual parents or people that understand the, the, the purpose of the existence of the church, they will start to see, because as you get involved, right? So there are different ministries in the church. There is ushering, there is a, a worship music, there is sound, there are all of those things. That is why it's important. In fact, that is the best, safest place to, to try out all these things, you know, start, try out ushering, you know, and if you are not good with ushering, they will tell you and say, ah, my friend, you please, <laughs> you need to go behind <laughs> because when people are coming here, you are shouting them, hey, hey, you, hey, you know, what are you doing, my friend? Hey, what are you? It's like, so, you know, you don't talk to people like that. So already we know, okay, you, my friend, we know you love God, you want to save, but uh -uh, this one is not for you, please. <laughs> right. So, so it starts there. It starts with serving in the church, serving in these different, you know, uh, places, right? And as you are doing that, you know, you'll be giving a responsibility that, okay, now you can start to lead. In some churches, there's what we call, you know, community groups, cell groups, right? You'll be a cell leader, you know? But also, it also starts with you evangelizing outside of the church, right? So in your community where you are, if you're a student, if you're at school, if you are in, in university, if you hear many, many real men and women of God today, they will tell you, I started ministering to my classmates, I started ministering to university. Many young people these days, they're not doing anything outside. Then they want to go to the church. Now they want to go and they say, God called me and said, uh, it's called me to be an apostle because every day, everyone these days is an apostle and prophet, right? So in fact, the, the process for the fivefold ministry is even, it's more serious and rigorous than the process for outside world, like going to university, right? Because you do that at your own pace, you know, etc. But because purposes and lives of people are dependent on you, that process is much more rigorous. So that is why you have to spend so much time in the presence of God and making sure that you have heard. But you also need to have your spiritual parents confirming that God has really called you. So I hope I hope that answers. Wow! Thank you very much. Yeah, um, Nathaniel, I hope that has answered your question because even personally, I didn't have the question, but then it answered one of my questions, you know? So thank you very much. Man. And I don't know, some people are trying to raise their hands. If, if you're ready to ask your question, you can unmute yourself. I can see Samson, Son of Grace, and Samuel. Samuel. So let's have, let's have... Um, hello, sorry. Sorry for rushing in like that. Yeah, thank you very much for what you said. But I want to say that uh, my main point is the feeding part. Are we so, supposed to walk, go through normal career paths like other people, but still have in mind that, okay, yes, this is what we are supposed to do at the end of the day? Because, you know, some people, some, some men of God these days, they just um, vent their uh, financial frustration on the congregation, and that's not really good. 
that's the, that's why I'm asking this question. Because right now uh, I'm about to round up my uh, my BSc, and the, the next step is going into a Bible school. So that's why I'm asking if doing this, doing um, going through the university and then going to the Bible school is really a smart idea or something to do. It's it's really all about what is the purpose of God for your life. If, if wanting to go back to Bible school is because, you know, you have a heart for souls, why can you not do that, you know, in your, in your science field, right? Why, why, do, why do we feel that we all need to be in the fivefold ministry? Why do we think that we need to be in the full-time, you know, church ministry? So it depends on what is, what is, um, what is your, your, your passion, okay? I'm a missionary I'm a myself. Missionary. I'm an evangelist. Okay, I'm a missionary. I'm a missionary. I'm a missionary. Okay, um, I, I, I understand. I'm sorry, please, I have to come in, sorry. Please, if we want to ask any question, we want everything to be done uh, in orderliness. You know, we are all students and we are all learned persons. So if there is any point at which you want to have a suggestion, just choose uh, the raise and button. So that is why we have a host. When the host sees that uh, it's time to entertain you, the host will call your name and you will uh, you will come up. Because one, we are we are streaming on YouTube and also we are also recording this session for others. So let's do everything in orderliness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, now to the next question. And please, because of our time, permit me, guys, this will be the last question we'll take for now. So someone said, ma'am, he said that one can have more than one purpose. In that case, how can you master all the purpose you discover? Okay, so that was from the perspective of, of how the world thinks, right? That it's actually not uh, many purposes, it's many jobs, right? Because people have this idea that they need to be to have uh, multiple streams of, of income because, you know, that's how the world thinks. They don't see God as their provider, right? So we only have one purpose. That is why those fears of influence are important. I see someone here is saying that they didn't get them. Don't worry, I'm going to share. I'm going to share the slides. You are, you are going to get them. Okay. So you, well, all of us, we have got a specific purpose that God has called you for, and that specific purpose is within those fears. For example, my fear is education. Within education, I'm wearing different hats, but I am, I'm very focused, right? Um, and the key thing, my key passion in education is the training of teachers and the learning of children. You see what I mean? However, I also do other things like career guidance. I do other things, you know, like what I'm doing here now, you know, like educating people about, about different things. Okay, so the key thing is finding what is that, what is the main, your main sphere of influence where God has called you? And in that one sphere, you can wear many different heads, but it will all be focused. My own is education. Everything that I do is education related. If anybody calls me to be a CEO of a company, I, I, I will reject because that's not me. I'm not a CEO of a company. If anybody comes and asks me to run a food a, a, a soup kitchen, I, I reject because that's not me. My own things, everything must be is within education. Within education, then I do I do different things. So I, I hope I hope that clarifies. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. I'm sure that has answered your question, Stephen. And okay, for the last question, although I'm sure if you were listening to what she just said, she would have answered your question. The last question said, please, ma, I don't get the spares of influence. So ma, please can you just help us run through it so as to answer the person's question. Okay, so the spheres of influence, are they call them the mountains. It's basically all those different parts. So one of them is um, religion, right? And that is how the world calls it, but it's basically the kingdom of God, right? So in religion, we know that, like I said, can be, you know, you are either called to be either a pastor or an apostle, fivefold ministry, or 
you are called to go and serve in a church. So what other what most churches do now is that instead of um, 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 paying uh, people in the worship team, for example, they will create employment for them. For, so those people, they will be every day, they will actually go to the church office and they will work on uh, some churches even have like a, a school of ministry. Like I remember I did a music school of ministry, right? So you will have a director, um, you will have someone who's going to be uh, directing the sound, you will have someone who's going to be directing the choir, you know, etc. And those people are employed full time in the church. You know, some people are the head, someone is the head of ushering, right? So they are coordinating all the ushering, everything that needs to be done in the church, and they are full time in the church, right? All the ushers, they report to that person. So that's what the religion part actually means there, right? Then there's education, okay? Then um, there is arts and culture, there is business, there is media, there is um, government. Uh, what's the other one? Let me just quickly check. There is media and family. So, yes, yes. There's religion, there's family, there's education, there's government, there's business, there's media, there's arts and entertainment. Okay. Religion, family, education, government, business, media, arts and entertainment. So you need to find yourself again very prayerfully. Pray, ask God, Lord where do i fit in in these so as you are doing this right because now i know some of you guys have never done this exercise before right so you're going to be doing this exercise you will have all these fears <clears throat> then you will be writing down your visions then you will be writing down your strengths and as you are praying you are looking at all of these things you are mapping out all of these things and i promise you if you are deliberate the problem is that we are not deliberate about it we just wake up every day and we say okay i'm going to university you know just trying to finish my degree then when i finish with my degree now then it's like okay now then i want to do something else and then i'll go to work so you have to be deliberate about it every single day you lay your hands you take communion sometimes you might need to go on a retreat you know take a three seven day retreat just close yourself in that's what I did. You know, when God was calling me, I I, to, I went on a retreat. I started fasting. I wrote down everything I said. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? And then God started showing me. He will show you the starting point, at least. And as you are now navigating, God will start opening doors. God will start connecting you with people, right? Um, and again, by faith, you know, sometimes you're not even going to be sure, but you just follow, you know, your path. You start sharing your, your vision, your dreams with other people, your friends who are close to you. You know, this is what I'm thinking. You know, this is what I'm thinking. And then you meet someone, then they'll say, oh, I know the person who's doing the same thing. Then they connect you, you know, et cetera. But the starting point is really writing down and then praying about it, praying about it, fasting, retreating, and then you start sharing. And then you you trust God for to help you move. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. You properly dealt with this topic, I must say. And thank you very much. On behalf of everyone here, we are saying a very big thank you for properly dissecting and exposing us to these truths that most of us didn't know. And so for everyone that has listened, I'm sure we have learned a lot. And then this is where the intentionality to start taking decisions comes. So we've learned how to, you know, find our career path, you know, finding purpose. So it is now left for you to personally have the decision to actually start. So I urge you guys, to actually start, like really just start, like start, and then God will help you and see you through. So thank you very much, Dr. Blessing. We really appreciate. So everyone, please, can you please drop emojis to appreciate Dr. Blessing? Appreciate that, send emojis, send clapping, send love, because I actually love you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, we uh, we do not take it for granted. It's a privilege to have you amidst us uh, with your busy schedule and for pouring yourself out for us. We so much appreciate, man. Uh, God bless you, man. Okay, what we'll do is uh, we'll collect all the information about Dr. Blessing, uh, about our social media platforms, you know, what she does, and we'll post it on the group. If we still need further clarifications on the session at which she has taught, because she's an expert in finding a career path for people.
So we we'll try to collate our social media platforms. Then we we'll drop it on the group, uh, on the general group in which everybody here is part of. So we we'll just drop it there. If you have any other questions or any interactions to have with her, you can just you can just follow her up. So thank you very much, Ma. We love you. God bless you. Love you too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So now I'll be handing over to the host, the person of Salvation Grace, to continue from me. I'm stopping now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Christina. And I hope that we all enjoyed our session. For me, it was a powerful session for me. And I, it was very powerful for me. And I hope that it does the same thing with every one of us. Yeah, so thank you once again, Dr. Blessing. So we are moving forward to our next session straight up. And I would like to call um, Mr. Oluwashion to introduce our next speaker. And then I will take his citation. Mr. Shem, please let's have you on board. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we are going to the second part of this session. We'll be, only, we'll be having only two lectures today. And our daddy is here with us. Please let's celebrate. <laughs> let's celebrate our prof. <laughs> he's, I, can, I can tell you guys, it's not easy to... <laughs> To bring him here today because <laughs> uh, he, he, he actually he actually make sure that uh, he's here with us today. And I quickly, you know, uh, there is one thing that I love to do is I love to celebrate our own, and I lo I really love to celebrate our own, and I want to celebrate that. Uh, that uh, that is a better life. He's a prof and also is a better light. He's a prof in Upper Femi Aolo University. So there is something that I quickly want to show you in which <laughs> I'm very sure that even my team members do not know that I'm going to do this. So for you to know who will be speaking to you. So let me quickly share this screen uh, to see that <laughs> this, is the, this is the Google Scholar page of Adadi. Prof. Shitsu, Professor Adebayo Shitsu. So he has published different kind. Uh, he has published different kind of journals. As you can see, that is cited all over the world. So don't think if you are hearing from him, don't think you are hearing from just. Yeah. Um, you can see different uh, journals. Yeah. Uh, even on uh, the same thing on okay I'm trying to share this profile also on researchgate.net to see uh, so that you can know the kind of person that is coming here today and you can know that we do not take it for granted that he's here, he's a professor of Upper Femi Aolo University and even currently, he's currently out of the country. Yeah, he's currently out of the country and he still take it uh, as a, uh, as something important to be a minister today. So please let's celebrate, let's celebrate daddy and let me hand over to the host, to just read this short citation as we hand over to Daddy for the session. Thank you very much, Daddy. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm muted. You are muted, Star Salvation. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Permit me to read the citation of Professor Adebayo. Professor Adebayo Shitu is a deacon of the Christ Apostolic Church, Mount Belta, Ileife, Nigeria. He backed his Bachelor and Master of Science of Degree in Microbiology from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Nigeria. In, 20, in 2006, he was awarded a PhD in Microbiology from the University of Kazul Nata, UK, ZN, Republic of South Africa. He is currently a professor in the Department of Microbiology, Faculty of Science, OAU, Nigeria. 
with over 25 years of experience in research. His research has contributed to knowledge on antibiotic resistance and the epidemiology of stipulacy in Africa. He is leading investigator on the continent on this research area of medical microbiology. Also, he is a re recipient of several awards, including the George Foster Fellow, experienced researcher of the Alexandra Vo Humboldt Foundation, Jambly from 2019 to 2021. Professor Adeba Yoshitu is happily married with children. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Professor Adeba Yoshitu. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind um, introduction. Um, good evening, everyone. It's a great privilege um, to, be, to, among, to be among you. Um, let me just go on to share my screen. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir. we can see, sir. Okay, thank you. So you can see my screen. Um, again, once again, thank you for the kind introduction. And um, I will use the next um, maybe 20, 25 minutes or so um, to make a presentation to you. Um, and then maybe we'll use the remaining time to for question and answer time. Um, so my topic, I just coined out this topic about academic excellence. And um, the idea is just to look at the mindset of uh, mindset for academic excellence. What are the things that we need to uh, what kind of mindset do we need to have, you know, when an individual is striving for academic excellence? So, um, my opening remarks first is basically to really, really thank God for this privilege. It's a global platform, and uh, I do not take it for granted that um, this opportunity has been created uh, for me to uh, just make uh, my little contribution and also to share some things um, that I know, that I have experienced, that I have um, worked with over the years. Um, I see myself as um, an individual, a bridge between two generations, um, the generation of the old, so I can tell stories of uh, um, uh, matriarchs and patriarchs, most especially in the Christ Apostolic Church, um, and also, I can relate to a large extent to the youth. Um, I'm very passionate about the youth, uh, whether in, in the Christ of the Church or youth generally across the globe. So I, I see myself as a bridge between the two generations. Um, and today I'm going to share tips which I wish I had known uh, earlier in life. Uh, maybe I could possibly have been far more successful than I am now if I knew these things early. Um, but uh, these are things that I have um, I've worked with over the years. And, um, and and these are things I just basically want to share with you. Now, this generation um, is regarded as the Generation Z. Uh, I don't know if there is any other word to coin or to give this generation, maybe I don't know, maybe there's ZY or ZZ, but I know there's a generation Z. It's a fast generation. Um, it's an impatient generation. Some of you may not agree with me. Um, it's a somewhat self-centered generation. Again, some of you may not agree with me. Yet for me, this is a unique generation. And this generation has a capacity to shock in a positive way, the older generation shock the older generation in in what sense? And it has to do with the things that you can accomplish, the achievements that you can bring to fore um, in these last days. And so I have a great regard for this generation. And like I said, I'm a bridge between the two generations um, to, to, to show this new generation the, the, the old ways, the old path, 
share stories of our matrix and patriarchs, clean from them, get lessons, and also use them um, to make sure that you know they get and achieve the great things that God has uh, um, earmarked for them. And, and in doing so, there's a need to have a mindset. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. A mindset that is superior than the mindset of the older generation. Some of the things I'm going to share with you, I have shared it earlier last year during the academic summit. So for some of you who attended the summit, it may not be new, uh, but there are, in, there are maybe one or two um, dimensions that we're going to look at, which is a bit different from the administration of last year. So I have an outline. Excuse me. First of all, I because I know that this is a global um, this is a global um, ministry or outreach. I will share with you my university. Uh, I have some very nice pictures. I'm always proud to show these pictures every every time I'm making presentations. And then we'll look at categories of individuals in the church. Um, I have what we call a global mindset. Uh, I also will share with you the Adamic mandate, the Jesus mandate, which is really very close to my heart. Um, I regard this generation as the Daniel generation, and I will tell you the reason why. And then we'll look at something, an individual, a 19-year-old star, um, Coco Gauff, who for me I regard as not just a world-class athlete, but also a God-class athlete. And also there are two videos, one about Coco, and also another video regarding Barack Obama and then the summary. So this is um, the website of my university, www.oauife.edu.ng. Um, the Vice Chancellor, Professor, um, how could I have? Your, your the screen is not shifting, sir. It's not moving, sir. It's not moving? It's not showing, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. It's not showing? Yes, sir. Like, it's not yes, moving. Sir. Is it the last one? The slide this is one? not showing. Yeah, it's, it's still the same thing the way it is before. Oh, really? Ah, okay, let me try it yeah. again. We are still on the first oh, really? academic excellence. Ah, okay, let me, let me, let me see if I can, I'm, I'm surprised about that. Um, present now. I'm surprised. Can, what, what can you see now? Yeah, I mean, yes, sir, me, I will on you. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, can you see this one? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's a different one, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, All right. Sir. Okay. Maybe I should use. The, um, okay. Um, did you see the outline? You didn't see the outline. Yes, you can see. Yes, sir. You can see it now. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yes, sir. All right, so let me let me go back just briefly. The opening remarks, um, looking at the two generations, the current generation, which is fast, but it's a unique generation with the capacity to shut the older generation with a superior mindset. And I've just reeled out the outline um, that we're going to look at very soon. Can you see the slides? Yes, sir. Good, all right, okay. Um, so this is Professor Simeon Bamire. He is the Vice Chancellor of Bafemi Law University. And like I said earlier, because this is a global art, um, this is a global administration, I, I, I prefer that um, some of you may be familiar about familiar with Bafemi Law University, but some of you may not be like my sister from South Africa. Um, I wish I could say, um, because I studied in South Africa. So, OAU was established in 1961. Sawona, Prof. Oh, Janice. Kya Lagunjani. Yeah, thanks. Good. <laughs> so, um, Oba Femolo University was um, formerly University of Ife. We have a student population of about 
35,000, and the motto is for learning and culture. Um, I always love to share these pictures, these are stunning pictures of the university. For those of you who are not familiar with this institution, um, this is the Faculty of Health Sciences, um, and you have an insight there of the founder of the university, Chief Obafemi Awolo. Um, this is the Catholic Church, uh, just outside the main campus, um, very nice stunning pictures of um, the Catholic Church. And this is what we call Road 1, this is the entrance, uh, the entry road into the university, really nice stunning pictures of, um, of the institution. This is the main, you can call it the main, um, the main campus, as it were. Um, here you have the secretariat and you have some other buildings. This is, the university is highly regarded as one of the most beautiful campuses uh, in, in Black Africa. Uh, and you, you will know that this was, the, the, the Chief of Femi Awolo was actually a visionary, visionary leader. Uh, who brought the world to Ife, and actually brought Ife to the world, if I can put it that way. He brought the world to Ife, and brought Ife to the world. This is the Ojidua Hall, um, also a master, an architectural masterpiece. So, for those of you who do not know OAU, I strongly recommend that you come around, just come around and enjoy the beauty of uh, of the university. My sister from South Africa, you are always, always welcome to our institution. All right, so um, next is for us to look at, um, now maybe if I, can you see the screen here like this? Yes, we can see, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, the categories sir. of individuals in church, you can. Yeah, we can see. Good, all right. Yes, yeah, okay. So. There are four categories that I want us to look at in the church. One, there are, there's the category of physically and spiritually unprepared individuals in the church. They are not skilled, they are mediocre individuals, and they do not know God. The second set of individuals are they are physically prepared, but they are spiritually unfit. They are, spiritual, they are physically prepared because they have money, they've got wealth, and they've got their wealth through two main ways. One, through their human strength, or they may have received, or they may, have, they may be called wealthy because through occultic means, okay? But they are wealthy, but they are spiritually unfit. The first category, they are not wealthy, they don't know God. This second, they were wealthy, they don't know God. There's the third category. The ca third category is they know God, but they are physically unprepared. They can pray all day, all night, but they've got no skill. And they are mediocre. They can do Bible study, they can pray, uh, they are born again, but they are not skilled. And then finally you have the third group that God wants us to be, is that they are born again Christians, they are spiritually fit, and they are physically fit. Physically fit in terms of they are skilled, they are discipled, they are wealthy. Because God wants us to be wealthy. He says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. So these are the four categories of individuals in the church. The question is, where do you belong? Well, I will leave that to you to answer. The first mindset I want us to have, if you want to excel academically, is for you to have what I call a local mindset. And the word local is derived from two words, global and local. 
So you, like I wrote here, GLO and then CAL. What does this mean? It means that you are, you must have a mindset for you to succeed, for you to be a highly successful person in academia. And this is not just in the academia, for you to be successful in life, you need to have a global mindset. And what does that mean? You are globally competitive and you are also relevant on the local scene. Very important. There are some people who have this myopic mindset. We as children of God are not expected to have a myopic mindset. If you have a global mindset, it changes you in every sense. It changes the way you look at yourself. It changes the way you look at life. It changes your attitudes. It changes your practices. It, it changes you completely as a person. That you have a global view of life and you are also locally relevant. Locally relevant, it may be in the body of Christ, in the church. Locally relevant, it may be in your institution of learning. But while you are locally relevant, you also have a global outlook. You have a world of your life. You have a world view of life in itself. Very, very important. Because if you have this, it, it changes you from the inside out. Very key for you to be successful, a global mindset. And I just have the slides for you just to have a picture. I'm using Nigeria as the focus right from the base, now to Africa, and then to the world. Sorry, Prof, the slide is not showing. Oh, okay. Let me... Maybe, maybe I should, I should no, I, okay. Uh, I will just use this, I will use this um, icon. All right, okay. sorry. Okay, but you, you've seen what I have just showed you earlier, just for you to have a local mindset. All right, okay. Um, ah, okay, all right. So, again, Going back to this picture of the categories of individuals, and I want you to just, I, I decided to repeat this uh, for you, so you just have a snapshot, a picture of the individuals in the church. And God's expectation for us is that we are spiritually fit and physically fit. And I will go in some detail about this um, in a couple of slides. All right, so I, I believe so much in the two mandate, and I think I had one or two questions that were posed to my sister in South Africa um, about whether to be in ministry or whether to be um, whether to be in ministry or whether whether education is good for ministry or whether you should go into ministry without going to school, and, and I think this. This couple of slides will try to explain that to some extent. Now, God has given us two mandates, uh, which I strongly believe. One is the Adamic mandate, and the second one is the Jesus mandate. And in God's view, the two of them go hand in hand. And you cannot really have true success unless you fulfill the two mandates. That is the Adamic mandate and the Jesus mandate. And what's the Adamic mandate? The mandate of go into the world, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. And this mandate was given to all human beings, male and female, in the management, administration, and control of the earth before the fall. And this mandate does not doesn't bother God whether you are born again or you are not born again. It's just the man he gave it to, to mankind. And this is exemplified in world exploration, in the universe, and various discoveries, and in breakthroughs in science and medicine, 
and technology. Now, the interesting thing about this, and the lesson here is, and again, apart from the fact, the first lesson I want to, you to get is the fact that have a global view of life, have a global view of yourself, and not just a global view, but also the fact that you need to be locally relevant. First lesson. Second lesson is this one. There is no superior being created by God. And I have the scripture in Acts chapter 17, verse 26, and it says, and he has made from one blood, that is from Adam, every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and their boundaries of their dwellings. So, what does this tell us? There is no superior being created by God. Whether you are male or female, a male individual is not superior to a female individual. A white person is not a superior to a black person. And you need to have this mindset that there is no one, there is no creation, there is no created, there is no human being that is superior than myself. Yes, the white population have better opportunities, but it does not by any means make them superior. And over and time and time again, it has been proved that when a black person is given the equal opportunity given to a white person, the black person excels far better than a white person. So the only advantage or the advantage they have, that's the white population, basically is because they have opportunities. Give a black person an opportunity and he will make the very best of it. So the second mindset you need to have is that a white person is not superior to a black person. There is no superior being created by God. We are just simply different from one another. No superior being. And that is very key. Now, I, I discussed earlier about the... the the Adamic mandate, and now the Jesus mandate. The Jesus mandate is for us to go into the world and make disciples of all nations. This is a restoration mandate for mankind, and it's. And the, the other thing I wrote here is a maximum, and this has to do with the fact that and I'm going to tie it with the Adamic mandate, and I have these individuals here. Um, if you look at them, they have basically the largest churches in Nigeria. I am not in any way saying that if you are not educated, um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that you cannot run a successful church. By no means, I'm not saying that. But education plays a key role because it, 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 God desires to use education or educated, educated people in fulfilling his purpose here on earth. And you can see these individuals, these men of God who are patriarchs in the body of Christ in Nigeria. Pastor Enoch Adeboye, he has a PhD in mathematics. Bishop David Oyedepo, PhD in human development. Pastor W.F. Kumuye, PhD in mathematics. Pastor Daniel Olukoya, PhD in molecular genetics. And these four individuals have basically the largest churches in Nigeria. So, well, they laid down their certificate to go into ministry. And just like my sister said, not everybody will get into the fivefold ministry as these people have got, I mean, are in the fivefold uh, as, as, as apostles in the body of Christ. But God can use and God desires to use people in their various vocations for the sake of the kingdom. So just like my sister said, not everyone will get into the 
get into ministry, have a ministry, have a church, or have a calling, as it were. But wherever you are, in fact, the thing that people say, people, I mean, when I say people, I mean some men of God say, is that even the last days, the end time army, the end time army is not going to be domiciled in the church. The end time army is going to be you and I in our various spheres of life, in our various um, areas of influence in the marketplace. And we, God will anoint us and make us to be vessels of honor in, not in the church, but even in our workplaces. That's God's desire. And that's God's heart desire in these last days, that in our marketplaces, we radiate the light of Christ to the glory of his name. Education is really very key in ministry. But like I said, even if you are not in ministry, wherever you are, you need to see yourself as fulfilling the purpose and the plan of God for your life. And I have here the lesson. You cannot maximize your potential in fulfilling your destiny without the two mandates. You, excuse me, the two go hand in hand. God wants you to excel in academia. And even while you excel in academia, God wants to use you as a vessel of honor wherever you are to the glory of his name. And remember I said earlier that I see this generation as the Daniel generation. Yes, it's the first generation. Yes, it's an impatient generation. Yes, it's a somewhat self-centered generation. But it's also what I call the Daniel generation. And the Daniel generation is the generation that takes care of both the Adamic mandate and the Jesus mandate. What are the characteristics? They are highly skilled, like Daniel, they excel in their vocation, but they are also anointed, they are prophetic. And I have this, they are prophetic, they are effective, and they are productive Christian. And what is their mindset again? They believe that they are the center of God's prophecy, they are God's end time jokers, they are saviors from Zion in Obadiah chapter 1, verse 12. They are not just average class, they are not average class. They are not just world class individuals. World class in that they are highly skilled, or whether they are competent, or, you know, but they are also what I call the God class individuals. They are anointed and they are heaven conscious. Again, looking at the two mandates, the Adamic mandate, the Jesus mandate. They are not just world class, but they are also God class. Which brings me to Coco. Um, for those of you interested, interested in tennis, Coco is a 19-year-old American that um, maybe um, last week or two weeks, I think it was last week or so, yeah, last week, he won the US um, Open Championships, that's tennis, the 2023 championships, and the US Open Tennis Tournament in, in the US. And this, this, this iconic, I call it an iconic picture of Coco, has gone across the globe. Uh, some people have castigated her, some people have applauded her, but for me, I really, really love this picture. And shortly after she won, the U.S. Um, um, tournament, she went down on her knees and, and prayed to God. She was unashamed. In the full glare of the whole world, she went down on her knees to, to thank God for giving her the victory. And so we see an example, a vivid example of an individual fulfilling the purpose of God, both as a tennis player and as a child of God. I, and really, really very instructive for me because um, this, this picture speaks a lot about, and speaks a lot about her faith and speaks a lot about the fact that God wants many of, many Cocos. It's really God's desire that many of Cocos pedigree 
will, will, will get into the world stage. Like I said, she's a 19-year-old person, 19-year-old girl, and uh, 19-year-old sister. Let me, I will call her a girl, uh, 19-year-old sister. But she's done so well in portraying Christ to the world. I have a video here. Um, I don't know if I have time for this, but let me just, and I don't know if it's possible to, you'll be able to hear it, um, but it's just a video of um, I interview, um, and there are so many things you can learn from this, but let me, I hope you'll be able to hear this video or listen. And now let's hear from our champion, Coco Golf. Can you hear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, we can. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, so let me go back. I just wanted to be sure you got it. Okay. Our champion, Coco Golf. I could go on and on about Coco, um, but because of time, um, I, I mean, I could say a number of things about just that clip. Um, so just, again, looking at this this 19-year-old lady portraying what it is to be a world-class and a God-class child of God, you know. Um, so um, I, I'm just about to round off now. I have a number of tips here. Um, I, I will just rush through this once. Um, and this is really, the first lesson here is really very key. Every child of God is a potential leader in the world. This is God's expectation, that every child of God, I put there a potential leader, but in a real sense, every child of God is supposed to be a leader in the world. Uh, and, and that is really very key. Um, I have a number of tips here, study to understand, not to pass exam, God is the author of wisdom seeking with all your heart. Pursue spiritual and academic mentoring. Pursue and submit to the anointed and the anointing. This next one is really very key. Stow into the anointing. If you have someone who you believe in and, you know, um, sow into that grace of God upon that person's life and you will see a multiple flow from that person into your life. And get it right on time, get better. Do not compare yourself with others. Compare yourself always with the standard of God. I have a very, I don't have time to talk about this. If possible, sit at the front desk in class. There is something about eye to eye contact between lecturer and student. I don't have time for all that. Um, um, there's the other one on relationships with lecturers, a relationship which is really very key here. Yeah. Relationship with the Holy Spirit, very, very important. Um, as, as a child of God. I have another video clip and I just want to do that shortly um, regarding Barack Obama uh, and I hope you also enjoy this. Just learn how to get stuff done. I've seen at every level people who are very good at describing problems, very sophisticated in explaining why something went wrong or why something can't get fixed. But what I'm always looking for is no matter how small the problem or how big it is, somebody who says, let me take care of that. And if you project an attitude of whatever it is that's needed, I can handle it and I can do it. Whoever's running that organization will notice, I promise. Which is why I think with young people, you don't always need to be so impatient asking for the plum assignment. A lot of times the best way to get attention is whatever is assigned to you, you are just nailing, you're killing it. People will notice, oh, that's somebody who can get something done. Then the second piece of advice, worry more about what you want to do rather than what you want to be. I think so often people have in their mind, I want to be congressman by 30. I want to make X amount of money by this age. The people I find that are most successful are the people who say, and I'm really interested in computers and figuring this stuff out, and that they end up being the Bill Gates. Or I'm really interested in how to cure this disease. Maybe they don't end up winning the Nobel Prize, but you know what? They have an extraordinary career because they're just interested in the thing itself. If you are absorbed by what you're doing, you're going to get really good at it. And whether you're rewarded, recognized, you get the positions that you want or not, the journey will have been. Okay. All right. So, and then finally, I think the last, just a minute, the last slide is just a summary. Um, again, just the number of things you have to take care of. 
your mindset. You're a global citizen in a location, act as one. Every believer is a potential leader in the, in the world. You are called to fulfill two mandates, the Adamic mandate and the Jesus mandate. And a fulfilled life is a life that embraces the two mandates. You are called to excel in your professional career and also as a vessel of God. God has called you not just to be a world-class person, but also to be a God-class individual. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for the wonderful session. Guys, let's keep let's let's keep it coming. Let's appreciate Daddy for this powerful session. Thank you so much, Prof. Shitsu. Yes, we have question for him. Yeah, I want to believe that some of us have questions. Okay. Dr. Blessing. Yes, come on. Let's have you, Ma. Uh, it's, it's not a question, but uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Prof. There's something prophetic happening here, and I don't want us to miss the moment. There's someone here who is very passionate about tennis, and God is going to use you to change the lives of people in Nigeria. I don't know how he's going to, where he's going to take you, how he's going to get you to where you need to be a world-class tennis. You are so passionate. I mean, to, if you were listening very carefully, I spoke about Venice and, and Serena. Prof comes and he brings a presentation about tennis. And if you connect the two, Serena and Venice actually opened up a door for Coco. Now they are giving Coco funds to open doors for disadvantage. So I don't know who you are. Is there a person here? It might be something that you've taken light, but is there a person who feels that that's me? You felt like, I don't know what to do, but you are so passionate about tennis. Please don't be shy, whoever you are. Well, I didn't even know that. I didn't know that you had something on tennis earlier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so whoever that person is, maybe it's even going to come later, but there's something that God is going to do through tennis, then somebody here that maybe God is even going to start talking to you about it. But I just thought, let's not miss the moment. Yeah, I did. I did, Prof. I mean, it's, I'm just amazed. Even President Obama, I spoke about President Mandela, but I didn't go into detail. So it's just amazing how God is working. Thank you so much. God bless you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Blessing. So, Prof, we have a question from you, yeah? How can one develop a career in the academic setting? So please give us tips to consider. Should I come again, sir? Well, no, no, no it, I think it's, it's okay. How can you develop a career in academics? Um, it's really going to take some time. Um, maybe I can, because, because of time, I may not be able to do justice to that. Um, but the person can contact me and then we can have a long discussion on this. Of course, you need to have a first degree, you need to have a second degree, you need to have a PhD, and then you get into the system. Um, getting a master's degree or a PhD degree is, has its own you know, you know, struggles that you have to go through, getting funding, getting scholarships and all that. So th there's a whole lot that has to go into that. Uh, and, and time will not permit me to talk about that. But I mean, I can discuss with this person and, you know, we can, you know, I can give the person, you know, pieces of advice on things to do and all that. And then when you get a PhD and then you get a job in the university, then you have to climb the ladder. Of, uh, if you start Daddy, with it. Yes. I want to make a special request. Sir. Yes. Should you have a separate session for those who are going into career academics if it is just a brief moment just like this that we'll just talk it will be at your convenient time sir we yeah well it's it, it's it's fine with me because um yeah i mean it's fine with me we can we can organize that um but i, I didn't want to look go straight into ag academics this time around because um i wanted for me, the mindset is really very important. Uh, if we deal with the mindset, then it will 
snowball to every area of life. That's why I didn't look into academics per se. But yes, we can have a time for that. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I will reach out to you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Prof. I think Adenike. Adenike, can we have you? Adenike, do you have a question? Okay. Adenike, can you hear me? Okay. Um, Steven, do you have a question? Yeah, thank I have you. a question. Please go ahead. Okay, oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I really um, enjoyed it. Um, it's a wonderful and amazing class. Thank you very much, Prof. And our sister from, from South Africa. Oh, well, my question um, is, is you know, I understand from the first speaker and the second speaker that, you know, your purpose, the first priority of your purpose must what be in line with um, God's purpose that your purpose must influence um, individuals, very important. So, um, and you and if prof you, you speak about the your academic the academic aspect is very much important you know then what about um those that um do not have the academic background you understand but they really have that passion they are really passionate you know to really influence people maybe um in the spiritual part or maybe they want to like go into ministry or maybe other and other ways like that they don't influence people that but that academic aspect is not there. The support is not there for them to, to move up. So in that case, how will um, someone now um, be able to achieve its true purpose? Because you cannot, the one cannot achieve its purpose by himself, but you need support, you know, to, to do that. So in that case, how can you truly um, achieve your purpose to really um, influence people to, um, make that your life will um, be able to uh, impact on people? That's my question. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, okay. just a quick, one. a quick one. Um, thank you for that question. I think the key word here is maximizing your potential in fulfilling God's purpose. I'm not saying, and I think blessing is not saying that you won't fulfill your purpose if you are not educated. But education helps you to maximize your potential. I hope you understand what I mean. Whether it's so so, yes, so, I so, uh, so it's 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 a matter of maximization so that you actually at full stretch fulfill your purpose because education gives you a better latitude of level of thinking um, organizational skills and all that it, it provides that latitude for you whereas an unlearned person may not have that you know for instance, many of you know Baba Biara, you know, and Baba Biara, when he started, he was not, he was on learned. But over the years, Baba Biara coached, he was coached, began to speak English and that, and that took him from where he was to other nations of the world where he could minister in English. Baba Biara is a very vivid example of someone who has maximized his potential. He's anointed, highly anointed of God, but he has added the fact that he has added education. He has added learning to his calling. And his calling has just <laughs> skyrocketed like no other thing. If he had stayed on learned, on educated, he would not have as much impact as he, had, he has done across the globe. So that's exactly what I'm trying to say here. And, and I believe that's what Sister Blessing is saying, that it, it actually is not that you will not make impact, but your impact will not be global. Like I said, you need to have a global view of life. You can't, you can't succeed. You can't have a global view of life. You, you, you can't, if you're on land, you can't have a global view of life. You can't reach the wall, uh, as it were. Um, so that's, that's the... the the relationship yeah it's okay i understand very much thank you very much sir okay okay yeah, yeah thank yeah, you very thank much you. Do, do we have other person that ask question do you have people who ask questions do we have question 
please don't be shy to ask question and you can as well drop the question in the message box let me check Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think we do not have um, any further question. Thank you very much, Professor Shitu. Thank you, Dr. Blessing. It was a wonderful session. Yeah, of course, it was educative. It was an educative session. So I'm trying to check if we have message um, questions. Yeah. Okay. So I think we are good. Thank you everyone for joining this session. I would like to invite um, Mr. Sean to to say thank you to our speakers and our facilitators. Sir, please come on board, sir. All right, thank you very much, everybody. I so much appreciate a special thanks to Daddy. We appreciate you, sir, for, uh, for taking time to come and speak to us here today, even with your busy schedule. And also, Dr. Blessing, we appreciate you. And one thing that I actually love in this session, is just the fact that we need to know that this boot camp is not just a career one we are looking at it from the kingdom perspective you know that is what Hello, Mr. Sean. Can anyone hear him? No. Okay. Guess it's um, a network problem. Yeah. Do you have a question? Adenike, do you have a question? <laughs> what? Okay. Dr. Blessing, do you want to make a comment? No, I just wanted to, to thank, I just wanted to just say thank you so much um, for, for inviting me, for having me in this platform. And yeah, I just want to appreciate all of you guys, all the organizers, um, Prof. She too, thank you so much for your presentation. It was really, really um, awesome. I'm just amazed, you know, how, uh, you know, how God works, how we are so aligned. Um, so I really just pray that you guys, you guys are blessed to get this kind of information. Mm -hmm. By the way, I charge for my, for my career guidance sessions. So I really pray that you will take what you are receiving here today and you will apply it. Amen. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. God bless you and enrich you. Amen. Thank you. We love you so much. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. So guys, we are ending the section already. I just want you to stay with me as we go through the um, activities for tomorrow. As you know, the bootcamp continues tomorrow. So we have two sessions tomorrow. We have the morning session, which is starting by 9 a.m. to 11 to 12. Then the evening session is um, starting by 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So please, would like you to we like you we like to see you tomorrow we have other facilitators and trust me you don't want to miss tomorrow's session we have great men coming tomorrow to teach us to talk with us and i know it's going to be as impactful as tonight's session so i think i need to ask us question i want to know that um the time was spent here Yes, um, we can't hear you clear. We can't hear you clear. What have you learned so far? What have you learned so far from the 
Okay, guys, in case you didn't get the question he asked, he said, what have you learned so far? In the course yeah. of these sessions, what have you learned? Okay, so Stephen, let add. All right, thank you very much um, for this opportunity again. Well, um, what I learned, I learned so many things, you know, but let me just drop out this little one that I learned. Um, I learned that in all my um, career driving, in all my purpose driving, in all that I'm pursuing, you know, that my dreams, you know, if my dreams, if my purpose do not make impact to somebody, if someone do not see Christ in my purpose, that doesn't make any sense at all. My purpose must, the first priority of my purpose must be Christ, must be driven in Christ, must be that what, as I'm going into this, um, this, um, this, um, this line, it must bring someone to, to Christ. It must make an impact that bring um, that that person will truly change for Christ. My purpose must be will that someone must appreciate God for it. So if it, if my if my purpose doesn't make any impact to anybody, truly it doesn't make any sense. That is for my own selfish reason reasons. If but if my purpose truly make any impact to somebody, it doesn't give. It, the credit, the, uh, that credit is the word given to God. So God is, um, God takes that credit. So that's what I understand from. That is what I learned. I, I learned a lot. So let me just drop layer like from this aspect. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much, yourself. And I need to make this known that we are actually taking notes of um, some of the participants, like the most active, most interactive. and we have something for you all so i hope you are not just doing this for just being sick we we'll see you and then we are taking notes of it of every single thing that you are saying and your action in this session so i like to take two more and i would like to be gender sensitive i want a female to talk now what have you learned so far it can just be like a sentence or two we just want to hear feedback we want to hear your opinion and then we want to be sure that the three hours or I think over three hours I've spent here is not a waste. It's not very sure. But we want to hear feedback. We want to hear what you've learned from this session. So Adenike, are you raising your hand? Anyone? Or do you want me to? Okay, Kristana. Kristana Adeniki, please let's have you. Okay, thank you very much. And I'd like to appreciate the speakers for a very good job well done. And yes, you know, honestly, as an undergraduate, I've had a change of mindset from the first session to the second session. Yes, you know, the fact that I can have a career and I can still do God, I can still be very spiritual, I can do everything with Christ that strengthens me. So thank you very much for the for the mind strengthening, we put it that way. So thank you very much, Dr. Shitu. You know, the, anyway, talking about us being the Daniels generation, like it was encouraging, it was mind shifting, like there was a change of mindset. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. I'm grateful to the organizers of this boot camp. Thank you very much. Yeah. So the top, um, the top of the evening is that you can have your career, you can do well in your career and still do God. I mean, that's just the big thing. No matter what you envision, what you want to become, you want to be this, that, you can still do God. And by doing God, you're not just doing for doing sake. You will be intentional about God. I would, let me use myself now, I will be intentional about God and then still striving in that my career, that my career space. So that, that, that was powerful. Thank you very much, Christiana. I want to take one comment more. Anyone? I'll call name. I'll, I'll just pick someone because I think nobody is trying to say anything. Okay. So let me just go in. Okay. Victoria. Can we have you? Don't hear me, oh. Victoria. Good evening, all. Yeah, good evening. 
Yes. Uh, I don't have much to say. I just joined like 10, 15 minutes back because I was at work. I was unable to join. I was busy. So I just joined just a few minutes ago. Next comment. Okay, but I hope you got something, I right? I took from what um, the other participants were saying. I've said the two participants, I only took from what they've said so far. Okay. Okay, so we're glad that you're able to join. And all we'll be sharing tips um, from the facilitators to the group. So kindly check up. And tomorrow, please. So tomorrow's session, the first session of the class, please, at 9 a.m. Okay. Yes. No, okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. yes tomorrow's session we want to have you please invite me ma please we can't hear you clearly ma oh, can you hear me now a little bit faint now right yeah very clear okay thank you very much so thank you all for joining this session it was amazing with you all and we can't say thank you enough to our facilitators thank you sir and ma we love you and then we hope that you keep striving you keep doing excellently and that we hope that we keep seeing reason to reach out to you to guide us and to mentor us thank you very much sir and personally i cannot wish i can't wait to connect with you both sir and ma and i know that a lot of us a lot of the participants also want to connect with you and then keep hearing from you thank you very much sir so so, uh, so our amazing participants, thank you very much for joining this session. Please, we do not want you to miss tomorrow. Like I said earlier, tomorrow's session is starting by 9 a.m. So please, of course, we keep dropping messages on the WhatsApp community. You can ask questions, you can network, you can connect with everyone on the group. But let's keep engaging ourselves and let's do it in love and any respect to Christ Jesus. So thank you everyone for joining this session. Thank you too. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tulela. Good night. Thank you, Joseph. Thank, thank you so God. much. God bless yeah. you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, please let's just hold on. Let's pray, let's pray together. Let's pray together. Yeah. Please, do we have um Brotim Lane in the house? Brotim Lane, can you hear us? Can you hear me, brother? Okay, let's someone just pray for us. Let's pray together. Someone pray for us. Well, thank you for this opportunity that you bring on to us to share with one another to be exposed to better knowledge, to better our lives and our career. Thank you for your word that have come forth powerfully this evening. We pray, Lord, that this enlightenment will transform our life for good forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we put all these works, all these thoughts that have been shared to action, and we see the relevance in our life and our experience. And we will come better passion, better passion for ourselves in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And we love you. We'll see you tomorrow. And please remember. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. God bless you. This was on the first section. Session after. I don't know what to say. Bye, Christine, everyone.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Please grow. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Love you. Love you. Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. This is the Kaki of um, Genesec still on the meeting. Okay, I think he just joined. If you can hear me, President said you should stop the recording on the system and end the meeting. Thank you. I think he left. Sister Christiana. Can you hear you, ma? Please, can you help me get the Turkey of Genset to join this meeting back? All right, no problem, ma. Thank you, Andy. Call. Sister, good evening, Sister Salvation. Yeah. No. Please, we're done with the meeting. I just need to get. Please, where is this um, Kaki of Jensek? Is not is not online. I guess. <laughs> To join back, it can, it can only stop the recording or the streaming on on um, a system. You can't end it on the phone. You have to oh, end it said, on the said system. His PC is off. He said his PC is off. His laptop is uh, off because the press president also is having data issues, and we can't if we don't leave this meeting, it will end. It will still be streaming. So. Oh. We need somebody to join with a system. Can you do you have a laptop? Is there anybody that can join with a laptop? I just need the yeah. person to join with a laptop. I'll make the person a co a host and the person will end it on the system. I'm using the phone too, so I can't do that here. Okay. Do anybody have a do you have a laptop, Christana? Yes. Please can yes. You, can you log into your laptop right now? Hold on, ma. Can you log into your Yes, I'm trying to. I'm coming. Okay. Ma, please hold on. We're trying to fix it for me. Yeah, no problem, ma. Thank you. That's more. Thank you. Yes.
I've logged in. Okay, she logged in already. She's All right, so I'm just going to make you a co-host now. Okay, are you the Kaki of Career Bootcamp? No, no, she's Christiana. No, no, no. Okay, yes. So um, you can just end the... I want you to end the recording and end the live stream before you end the call. Christiana. Check. Okay. End the recording. Check those three buttons. You should see where either in off control though. So you should see where you can end the recording and end the live stream. Are you doing that? Are you doing that? Yes. Okay, okay. Can you stop the streaming on YouTube? It's can you imagine? it's still streaming on YouTube? Can you stop the stream as well? You would see a place where um it's being streamed to YouTube. 